I'm Roman Yossi of the Nashville Predators. I'm Dante Fabro of the Nashville Predators. This is Philip Forsberg of the Nashville Predators. I'm Colton Sissons of the Nashville Predators. I'm Eustace Aros of the Nashville Predators. You're listening to the Renegades of Puck with Crazy Charlie. Welcome to the Bunker. Welcome to the Renegades of Puck Podcast. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonny. And before we get started with the No Half Step and Hockey coverage, first, let me direct you to our home website, renegadesofpuck.com. Once you go to renegadesofpuck.com, you'll learn everything you need to know about the show and what you're getting educated about the show. You can click on that merchandise tab, take you straight to our classic logo t-shirt, our pride logo t-shirt, all of our different special event t-shirts, and so much more. All the gimmicks you couldn't know, love, and expect from Renegades Puck are all still available in our online store. Whether that is socks, throw pillows, wall art, bed sets, makes no difference to the Renegades of Puck. Something like 88 different items in our online store. The best way to say it is that we've sold out so that you can buy in social media is of critical importance to this independent hockey operation so here's how you can jump in the trenches with the renegades of puck you can find us on x and threads you can find us on instagram and facebook also on tiktok so please whatever it is that your social media preference of platform is jump in the trenches with us right there subscribe to the channel and help us out and pass those links along youtube that is what we are pushing right now more than anything as far as the podcast is concerned please go to youtube and search out renegades of puck subscribe to that channel turn on those notification buttons if you don't mind it would go a long way to helping this independent operation out and it would also help us grow tremendously there is no such thing as a podcast that does not have a video component to it and we need to build up and bolster this video component before we can move forward with the overall plans for the rest of the operation so please if you can support our youtube channel it sure would mean a lot to us stick taps love and respect to all of our recent subscribers especially to our great friend Carlos out in Memphis who's holding down the western frontier leading hockey trench warfare out of the Memphis area we appreciate you so much Carlos thank you so much the rest of you leave some comments down there let us know we'll give you a mention here on the broadcast here during the playoff series now Venmo, that is how you can support the show. Please, you can go to Venmo, just search out Renegades of Puck, or you can scan the QR code that is currently on your screen. Every dollar goes along with helping the Renegades of Puck, and we sure could use a little bit of support. As we're going into the summer cycle, and we're starting to prep, plan, and build for the future, we do have some ambitious projects in mind. Episode 1000 is on just the horizon, so we need to start planning for some of these bigger events. So if you can spare any dollars along the way, please send them over to the Renegades Puck. Support your local Renegades today by scanning the QR code that is currently on your screen. Now listen, I know it is time for the No Half Step in Hockey coverage, so let me deliver the goods. It is time for Operation number 905. That is right, it is time for show number 905. And at this moment in hockey history, it is time to talk first round of the NHL playoffs. The Nashville Predators come into this first round series versus the Vancouver Canucks finishing fourth overall in the Central Division. After 82 games skated, the Preds finished with a record of 47, 30, and 5. 99 points saw the Preds finish in a bit of a bubble, eight points short of the third place team in front of them, the Colorado Avalanche, and seven points ahead of the St. Louis Blues, the fifth place team directly behind them in the standings. And the Preds seem to be in this somewhat protected bubble down the stretch of the regular season. The Central Division was won by the Dallas Stars. The Winnipeg Jets finished in second with Colorado finishing in third. They'll face off in the first round of the playoffs. And then the Nashville Predators also qualified as a wild card team. The Preds finished as the wild card one team with 99 points. Vegas finished as the second wild card team with 98 points on the road, which is where game one and two will take place in this best of seven series versus Vancouver. The Nashville Predators had a record of 24, 14, and 3. 24 road victories victories this season was actually quite impressive and a very good overall road record. The Preds scored 269 goals in the regular season. They gave up 248 goals against as a goal differential of plus 21. This best of seven series starts off on Sunday night with game one in Vancouver and then Tuesday, also in Vancouver, first game at Bridgestone Arena will be game three that will be on Friday and then Sunday, early start time for that one versus the Vancouver Canucks in game four. If necessary, they'll head back to Vancouver for game five on April the 30th. If necessary, they'll come back to Bridgestone Arena on May the 3rd and face off against Canucks in game six and then game seven, if necessary, again, would take place on May. May the 5th. 
These two teams met three times during the regular season. The Vancouver Canucks went 3-0 and against the Nashville Predators, taking all six points in the regular season and outscoring Nashville 13-6. to Now, all of those games took place in the first half of the season, and the first two took place quite early on. Let's go back and recap. It was on October the 24th that the Nashville Predators fell on home ice to the Vancouver Canucks 3-2. to UC Soros took the loss, going 21 out of 24. Sherwood and Sissons scored the only goals for the Predators. Demko picked up the victory for the Vancouver Canucks, net 16 out of 18. Rather light workload overall. Hoglander, Mikhaev, and DiGiuseppe had the goals for the Vancouver Canucks. The two teams would meet again on Halloween. This, that would be, of course, October the 31st in Vancouver when Vancouver would score a 5-2 victory. Lankinen would get the start on the road for the Preds and take the loss. 22 out of 26 was his stat line. Fabro and Sissons each with a goal in that game. Thatcher Demko again with a start against the Preds. 27 out of 29 and picks up his second victory in a row against Nashville. Pedersen did most of the damage with three goals in that game. Hughes had three assists. Lafferty and Mikhaev also chipped in with a goal. On the 19th of December would be the third and final time these two teams would meet in the regular season. It was as the Nashville Predators were starting to turn the corner on this season and starting to show some improvements, but the Vancouver Canucks put them right back in their place at Bridgestone Arena immediately with a 5-2 victory. UC Soros, 19 out of 24, took the loss and got pulled. Lankinen came in in relief and did a decent job. Glass and Luzon had a goal in that that game for the Preds. DeSmith, 26 out of 28, picked up the victory for Vancouver. Suter, Pedersen, Amon, Bluger, and Hoglander all with goals for the Vancouver Canucks. So again, the Nashville Predators on the regular season went 0-3 against Vancouver, 0 out of 6 possible points, and were outscored 13-6. to And what jumps out immediately when you talk about these statistical recaps from these games during the regular season is you do not see Philip Forsberg or Roman Yossi or Gus Nyquist or Ryan O'Reilly. Frankly, you do not see any of the top-end offensive players for the Nashville Predators scoring against the Vancouver Canucks early in the season and they definitely did not get the goaltending that they have gotten in recent stretches giving up a total of 13 goals in the three games against the Vancouver Canucks so I think it is a different matchup than what we saw during the regular season series the Predators have certainly gone a long way to improve but have they made up enough of the learning curve to defeat this Vancouver Canucks team four out of a possible seven games. This Vancouver Canucks team comes in winning the Pacific Division. They finished with a record of 50, 23, and 9. Three of those regular season victories came head-to-head against the Nashville Predators on home ice. The Vancouver Canucks are 27, 9, and 5. They scored 279 goals on the season. They gave up 223. That is a goal differential of plus 56. Let's talk about their last five games of the regular season just to show you how the trends were down the stretch. They were competing against the Edmonton Oilers directly head-to-head for number one overall in the Pacific Division. It got close, but the Canucks were able to take care of their own business, and they handled it during this stretch right here. On the 8th of April, it was a 4-3 to win versus the Vegas Golden Knights. So that's against a playoff team right there. On the 10th of April, it was a 4-3 to overtime loss versus the Arizona Coyotes. A 4-13, a 3-1 to win at Edmonton. That's essentially where the Vancouver Canucks clinched the Pacific Division. Didn't officially clinch it, but that's where they did the work that needed to be done. On the 16th of April, a 4-1 to win versus Calgary, and their final game of the regular season was a 4-2 to loss at the Winnipeg Jets. Taking a look at the final regular season rankings and numbers, between the two teams in this matchup. And it's impressive to see how many top 10 statistical metrics we are going to get to talk about. In the goals for category, the Nashville Purs finished 10th overall in the NHL, 3.24 per game. But the Vancouver Canucks were better than that. 3.4 goals per game was sixth best in the NHL. Big disparity in this particular category here in the goals against category. The Preds giving up 3.02, 14th in the NHL, right around the middle of the league. But the Vancouver Canucks only giving up 2.7 goals per game. That is sixth best in the NHL. So sixth best in goals for, sixth best in goals against. In the shots for category, this is where the Predators do have one distinct advantage, especially down the stretch as they were 
piling up shots on goal. The Preds finished with 32.2 shots on goal per game. That was eighth best in the NHL. The Vancouver Canucks only generating 28.4 shots on goal per game. 26th in the NHL is their lowest rated metric out of the top six that we talk about here in this particular segment. In the shots against category, the Predators giving up 30.6 per game is 23rd. This is where the Vancouver Canucks make up for the shots for ranking. Sixth best in the NHL, only giving up 28.6 shots on net per game. So the Nashville Predators are definitely running into a bit of a wall right here in the shots opportunities categories. When it comes to the special teams, it is the Nashville Predators with the 16th rated power play of a conversion rate of 21.6%. 58 conversions, 269 opportunities in the regular season going up against Vancouver's 11th rated power play, converting at 22.7%. 58 conversions on 256 opportunities on the season. When it comes to the penalty kill, the Preds have a kill rate of 76.9%. That's 22nd to best in the NHL throughout the regular season, which is in the lower third third of the NHL 57 power play goals against is not an impressive number the penalty kill for the Vancouver Canucks kill rate of 79.1 percent is 17th best in the NHL they gave up 53 power play goals against on the season when it comes to the individual stats leaders for each of these teams it is Philip Forsberg for the Nashville Predators with a franchise season record of 48 goals at 46 assists that for 94 points the captain Roman Yossi led the NHL in goals for defensemen with 23, 62 assists on that is 85 points for the year. Gus Nyquist was one of the best free agent signings by production and points on the season. 23 goals, 52 assists, a career high in assists, 75 points, a career high in points. O'Reilly also another solid free agent signing, generating 26 goals and 43 assists for the Predators this season and 69 points overall. Tommy Novak takes another step in his development. All he does is continue making plays for 18 goals and 27 assists for 45 points on the season. The Vancouver Canucks, though, full of highly skilled offensive threats that can make a huge difference in any game at, frankly, any time. Pedersen scored three goals against the Predators this season. That was the most against the Preds of anybody, but Hoaglander was also on that list for leading scorers against the Preds. Overall, on the season, Miller paced the Canucks 37 goals, 66 assists, 103 points. Hughes out of the blue line, 17 goals, 7 75 assists, 92 points on the season. Always incredibly dangerous, especially in power play situations. Pedersen, 34 goals on the season. Again, three of those came against the National Predators. 55 assists, 89 points overall on the year. Bosser, 40 goals, 33 assists, and 73 points on the season. Philip Ronick, five goals, 43 assists, 48 points overall. Now, in net, I am very much looking forward to seeing the matchup of UC Soros with his record of 30. 25, 24, and 5, a 906 save percentage, 2.86 goals against average, and three shutouts on the season going up against Thatcher Demko, who also has a record of 35, 14, and 2. 0.918 save percentage, 2.45 goals against average, and I believe it is five shutouts on the season. Five total shutouts on the season. That is an impressive number, and Demko, if it wasn't for uh, some brief injury time, uh, Demko easily would have paced amongst the league leaders in victories and other statistical categories, but he was slowed down just just the tiniest bit this season, but out of the gate, Demko was the hottest goaltender uh, through the first several weeks of the season. UC Saros was not. UC Saros uh, struggled the first several weeks of the season and for uh, different parts of the season UC Saros had his difficulties but finishes the season with 35 victories a 906 save percentage 2.86 goals against three shutouts that's not not bad and UC Saros so is capable of doing more than keeping the Predators in a series he's more than capable of stealing a game he is capable of stealing a series we've never seen that we know in theory that works but we've never seen that in application can UC Saros Saros beat the Vancouver Canucks four out of the next seven games to be determined. Thatcher Demko, another young, incredibly talented goaltender at the NHL at this point in time. As Saros versus Demko is a fascinating goaltender matchup. The two premier defensemen that are also extremely good on the offensive side of things, Yossi and Hughes, in this matchup is going to be very fun and great to watch. Uh, and then it comes to Philip Forsberg and Bosser, two 40 goal scorers in this series. Uh, I think that the Nashville Predators and the Vancouver Canucks is a fascinating series because the style and the speed 
rate and the pace with which the Predators play is exactly what the Vancouver Canucks have been implementing over the last couple of seasons that led to the Canucks winning the Pacific Division. The Preds were boat raced by the Canucks earlier in the season in three games, and it showed that there was a learning curve and a wide disparity between where the Predators are and where the Canucks were headed at that moment in the season. Now, a few months later, and the Predators have caught that moving train, can they apply all the lessons that they've learned throughout this season, and can they put enough pressure on the Vancouver Canucks, who as division winners hosting games one and two have a lot of pressure on them. Their fan base has incredibly high expectations for this Vancouver Canucks team. They went almost the entire season in first place in the Pacific Division, and they competed for the President's Trophy. So, high expectations for Vancouver no expectations for the Nashville Predators coming into the season to be anywhere near this particular situation. So for the Predators, it's no expectations versus high expectations and a bunch of fascinating matchups throughout the lineup. How does this Predators team respond after not seeing this Vancouver Canucks team since December the 19th? Well, a lot's going to be revealed in game one. That is for sure. Game one is Sunday night. You're all set up for that. You're all set up for the series. Let's go back. Let's take a couple of minutes. Let's recap the entire season series between the Nashville Purs and the Vancouver Canucks. It's all three games. It's the Reverse Sports full game recap, and it's coming up next. Hockey players are as unique as the game itself, and your uniform should be tailored to fit you. Rebirth Sports is your sports apparel tailor. From shells, bags, warm-ups, hats, hoodies, branding, and more, let Rebirth Sports be your custom hockey tailor. And don't forget to tell them they do more than just hockey. Rebirth Sports on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Rebirth Sport, a match made in hockey. It's now time for the Rebirth Sports full game recap. You give us 10 minutes, we'll give you the entire game. All the goals, all the penalties, and all the important plays that add up to the entirety of the game. We go all the way back to October the 24th of the year, 2023, when the National Predators were welcoming in the Vancouver Canucks for the first time between these two Western Conference teams this season. Head coach Andrew Burnett deployed his line combinations in the following way. Forsberg, O'Reilly, and Parson, Nyquist, Sissons, and Fajimo, Sherwood, Novak, and Evangelista, Trennan, McCarron, and Cole Smith make up your fourth line. Yossi and Fabro, McDonough and Carey, Luzon and Barry make up your defensive pairings. And you see Soros gets another start in net. He has started every single game this entire season. Slow start as far as events go in this game. Teams up and down, back and forth between the circles before 3.13 of the first period. You see Soros comes up with a save on Hodgson, his first shot on goal for save of the game. At 4.14 in the first period, Thatcher Demko comes up with a save on Dante Fabro, first shot Shot on goal for the Nashville Predators. But at 428 of the first period, Mikhaev gets his first goal of the season. It was a long shot that was deflected out high off of the stick blade of Roman Yossi. You see Soros seemed to lose it for a moment. A little bit of a flutter to that puck as well. Vancouver now has a one nothing lead at Bridgestone Arena early in the first period. At 5:12 of the first period, Thatcher Demko comes up with a save on Tyson Berry. 6:22, Saros comes up with a save on Hughes. 7:30, Demko a save on O'Reilly. At 9:42, we get our first special team scenario of the game as Vancouver picks up a penalty. Too many men on the ice. Six skaters is not allowed. Demko comes up with a save on Forsberg. O'Reilly tries to bat the puck in out of midair on the rebound attempt, and it goes just wide. A great scoring opportunity for the Nashville Predators right here. Overall, a good penalty kill. That was the only scoring chance by the Nashville Predators. The Vancouver Canucks put up. Almost everything kept outside, and a really good job by them. At 10.32 of the first period, Demko comes with a save on Forsberg. At 13.44, Demko comes with a save on Fabro off of the rush. 14.30 of the first period, Saros comes with a save on Hughes. 14.46, Saros another save on Beauvillier with the extended pad. At 15.38 of the first period, it's Colton Sissons coming up with his fourth goal of the season, tying the game up at one apiece, getting Nashville on the board with a wrist shot that goes top corner after a toe drag Cole Smith sets the pick and the screen actually surprised he didn't get called for interference on the play Colton Sissons though gets the good goal and it counts his fourth of the season ties the game up at one apiece 15-38 into the first period so the Nashville Predators after looking somewhat lifeless offensively find themselves in a tie game 15-46 of the first period UC Sars comes with a glove save on Bosser and Vancouver is just buzzing over the final shifts of the period uh, the Preds just another 
slow close to the period. This is much what we saw in the previous game against the San Jose Sharks, but UC Soros is able to maintain things at 1-1. Six shots on goal apiece for each team, a fairly low event first period. That will change as we go into the second period. 22 seconds into the second period on the clean sheet. His former Nashville printer, Di Giuseppe, his first goal of the season. He slipped behind the D and made a strong deflection as Soros goes for the poke check and fails to connect with the puck in the play. And Di Giuseppe is awarded the goal. Vancouver now leads 2-1 to one early, early in the second period. So Vancouver buzzing at the end of the first and starting by picking up a goal at the beginning of the second. 2-10. Soros Comes up with a save on Pedersen at 311 of the second period. It's Hoglander coming up with his second goal of the season. It was a tip in front. Soros never saw it. Vancouver now five shots on goal in the period in the first 311. And they also hold a three to one lead over the Nashville Purse at Bridgestone Arena. 407 into the second period. Thatcher Demko comes with a save on Alex Carey. 633. Soros comes with a save on Pew Suter. 648 of the second period. Soros comes with a save on Myers. Vancouver now seven shots on goal goal at the 648 mark of the second period. I made notation of that particular number because they had six the entirety of the first period and the Canucks are frankly dominating all over the rink. At 918 though the Nashville Purs will respond. Sherwood's second goal of the season. It was a one-timer off of Tommy Novak's cross zone pass off the rush. Tommy Novak all he does is make plays. Sick pass across the zone right here and Sherwood's one-timer was just an absolute bomb. His second of the season is also the second goal of the game for the Nashville Purs. Vancouver though still leads in the second period by a score of 3-2. We are halfway through this game in a 10.03 of the second period. Saros comes up with a save on Garland at 10.39. Demko comes up with a save on Forsberg. 12.50. Saros, a save on Hughes. Saros now going to go to work for quite a while. At the 13-minute mark, a save on Cole plus the follow-up on by Pew Suter. At 14.44, a save on Kuzmenko. 16.31, a save on Garland. 18.40, a save on Pedersen. And again... Just like in the end of the first period, the Vancouver Canucks are just buzzing all over the Nashville Predators zone. As a matter of fact, just missing a glorious scoring opportunity as we hit the buzzer. No official shot on goal was credited because it came at just after the horn, but another great scoring chance even up to the echo of the whistle of the second period. So the Vancouver Canucks are just simply dominant through two periods, but the Nashville Predators do find themselves still in this game, only down by one. Shots on goal at the end of the second period. Vancouver listed at 21, Nashville at 11. We flip over the sheet and we go to the third period. At 116 into the third period, it's Thatcher Demko coming up with a save on Sissons from the slot. This was just an incredibly glorious scoring opportunity and one of Demko's biggest saves of the game. A reactionary save more than anything, but it doesn't make a difference. A huge, huge and timely save to keep it a one goal game. 3.57 of the third period Demko comes up with a save on Forsberg. We go all the way to 7.58 because the teams were really starting to go up and down between the faceoff circles quite a bit. 7.58 of the third period. Saros comes with a save on Joshua. The rebound trickles just wide. A really strong scoring opportunity here for the Vancouver Canucks. I made the notation at this point in third period. The Preds have evened out the game in, in a game that's been largely dominated, especially the second period by the Vancouver Canucks. They had possession. They were first on the puck. They were quicker to battle. Uh, the National Predators have finally evened these things out. 12 minutes to go in the game. 8.54 of the third period. Demko comes with a save on Evangelista's drive to the net. This was an incredible scoring opportunity for the National Predators as Luke Evangelista took the puck off the half wall, danced along the goal line, stepped out, and went for the jam. Demko, another huge save here in the third period. 9.39 of the third period. UC Saros comes with a save on Mikhaev. 11.06. Saros comes with a save on Hoglander at 12.18. Thatcher Demko comes up with a save on Alex Carrier. 12.43. Demko, another save, this time on Sherwood's deflection. The Nashville Predators, for the first time in this game, you can say they are starting to build some momentum and generate some offense. That's why at 13.18, Friedman is going off the box minutes for interference on O'Reilly. O'Reilly absolutely earned this power play for the Nashville Predators. O'Reilly trying to crash to the net and being held up by the defenseman. Friedman 
Friedman preventing him from pursuing the puck and a potential scoring opportunity. Nashville Predators go on the power play and Demko comes up with a save on Roman Yossi. But overall, again, a strong penalty kill by the Vancouver Canucks, keeping everything to the outside. As the power play for the Nashville Predators is expiring, the arm goes up again, 15-19. So one second after the previous power play expires, the Nashville Predators are going back on the power play. Myers is off to the box this time. Two minutes for cross-checking on Parson, and he was just wearing Parson and out in front of the net. Luke Evangelista, though, before the Nashville Predators can get any momentum going on the power play, and it was a slow, slow start to this power play. Luke Evangelista is off to the box. Two minutes for interference. That's going to lead to a 4-on-4 four four scenario for 35 seconds, which leads to a Vancouver power play for 1 minute and 25 seconds. Now the Nashville Predators shorthanded for the first time in this game. Only a minute and 25 seconds worth, but they come up strong. Played good, hard defensive hockey here, allowing the Preds to get the 6-on-5 opportunity. First attempt at an 18-49, but as soon as UC Saros left the crease, there was a whistle. So, after the Preds get control of it again in the final minute and the 6-on-5 opportunity, we see absolute and total chaos. As a matter of fact, we would see Pedersen for Vancouver hit the post and miss the empty net wide. Multiple opportunities missed by the Vancouver Canucks. The Nashville Purs just could not seem to corral the puck or get it down into the offensive zone to set anything up, and the Nashville Predators would not even generate a 6-on-5 shot here at the end of the game. Just total chaos as we hit the end of the game, and the Vancouver Canucks do, do hold on for the 3-2 to two victory at Bridgestone Arena, and the Vancouver Canucks end up out shooting the Nashville Predators 24 to 18. That's the least amount of shots the Preds have had on goal this season and certainly uh, reversed the trend that I had talked about in the preview where Vancouver did not get many shots on goal and gave up tons of shots and just the opposite for the Preds. But that did not play out in action tonight as Vancouver holds on in the third period. Preds did finally get their skates under them, but it was just too late and they could not take advantage of those two big power plays at the end of the game. Overall, not the best game of the season for the Nashville Preds, largely dominated on their home rink, but they only fall by one goal to the Vancouver Canucks. It's it's now time for the Rebirth Sports Full Game Recap. We go all the way back to October the 31st of the year, 2023. Happy Halloween. Nashville Predators are in Vancouver taking on the Canucks. And Andrew Burnett deploys his lines in the following way. And by the way, the lines were wrong again, as posted from pregame skate. So I have corrected them, and these are updated and corrected. Forsberg, O'Reilly, and Nyquist are your first line. Sherwood, Novak, and Evangelista to make up your second line. Trennan, Sissons, and Foodie make up your third line. Smith, Parson, and Fujimo make up your fourth line. Yossi and Fabro are your top defensive pairing. McDonough and Carey, Luzon and Barry. Kevin Lankinen gets his first start of the season for the Nashville Predators. We are just 122 into the game, and our first action of the game is... A penalty shot. Yes, they've been increasing across the board all season long, but highly surprising to find our first active play of the game at 122 of the first period to be a penalty shot. It's awarded to Foodie after Myers takes the penalty, hooks him from behind. He lost his balance and failed on the attempt of the... Of the penalty shot. 2-10 into the first period. Lankanen comes up with a save on Joshua. It's his first save of the game. At 4-30 of the first period, Lankanen comes up with a save on Roenick's backhand. At 4-44 of the first period, Thatcher Demko comes up with a save on Barry. 5-27 Demko, another save on Sherwood. At 6-07 of the first period, Lankanen comes up with a save on Hughes, sliding across a huge early save in this game. At 6-44, Demko's back to work, coming up with a save on Yossi. Vancouver D was scrambling all over over the zone, giving the Nashville Predators multiple opportunities here, but only Yossi was able to get one of those shots through and on the net. At 9.27 of the first period, it's Lankanen coming up with a save on Pedersen, and at the middle point of the first period, I made the notation and the comment uh, that it was a very even first 10 minutes. It took the Nashville Predators 45 to 50 minutes to get into the game against the Canucks, get their skates under them the previous time they played. This time in the first 10 minutes, I thought both teams fairly even through the first 10 and of course, as soon as I make that notation, the Vancouver Canucks start picking up some momentum. At 11.06 of the first period, Lankanen comes up with a save on Joshua's deflection. Plus, the follow-up by Garland goes off of the iron. Golden opportunity for the Canucks right here. 11.57 of the first period, Lankanen comes up with a save on Hoaglander. 12.40, Demko back to work, coming up with a save on Sissons. At 13.45 of the first period, we see our first goal of the game, and it goes to the home team, the Vancouver Canucks. Al Afferty awarded the goal, his second of the season. He batted in the rebound on 
off of the initial huge shot from out high. A lot of good traffic in front. Lafferty, a huge part of that. Lankinen cannot track the rebound up into the air over his shoulder, and it goes into the net. Vancouver Canucks have a 1-0 lead on home ice. Nashville Predators, though, respond fairly quickly. Just a couple of minutes later, it's Colton Sissons picking up his fifth goal of the season, tying the game up at one apiece. Foodie intercepted the pass in the neutral zone. Good read and react right there. Yossi carried the puck in, doing his magic, and then Sissons gets the finish from the slot area. Colton Sissons' fifth goal of the season already for the Nashville Predators ties us at one apiece. At 16, I believe this is 32, 16-32 of the first period, it's Fabro's first goal of the season. It was a wrist shot through traffic. Nice job right here. It looked more like the goaltender Demko might have lost tracking, lost sight of where it was going and even maybe guessed the wrong way. But Dante Fabro awarded with a goal just the same. His first of the season gives the National Purse suddenly a 2-1 to one lead. So the Preds, two goals in just a matter of about 22 seconds. 17-08 of the second period. Lankanen comes up with a save on Myers. 17-26 of the first period. It's Miller off to the box. Two minutes for hooking and add two minutes for unsportsmanlike on to that one. His comments to the referee after the whistle were not welcomed. It would be Demko coming with a save on Evangelista. But then for the National Purse, their power play circumvented when Tyson Barry's off to the box, two minutes for hooking, creating a four-on-four -four scenario that would end the first period. Vancouver outshoots Nashville in the first period 10-9, to nine, but the Preds have a 2-1 to one lead. Over to the clean sheet of the second period, we have a carryover of four-on-four four, for 53 seconds, and that's the 53-second mark of the second period. It's Pedersen, his third goal of the season. A wrist shot catches Lankinen off guard during the four-on-four. Four. He cut across the top of the zone, and just a sick, sick release put the puck into the net off of Lankinen's pad and then in. Vancouver ties the game up at two apiece. Vancouver would have a brief power play and Lankinen would come up with a save on Pew Suter. That would be the end of that scenario. Two minutes into the second period, Thatcher Demko was with a save on Barry at 6-16. Yes, four minutes without anything really happening here. Demko comes up with a save on Foodies backhand at close range at 8.03. Another two minutes with very little happening. Demko comes up with a save on Luzon 11-19. Demko comes up with a save on Barry plus the rebound jam by Sis uh, by far the best chance of the period. Vancouver has gone 10 minutes plus without a shot on goal in this period. Now in the National Purse, finally generate a decent scoring chance. Honestly, some of the lowest event hockey we've seen in a very, very long time. And for such a late start, uh, that's a tough 10-minute stretch of hockey right there to watch. At 11.57 of the second period, it's Thatcher Demko coming up with a save on Sherwood off of the rush. At 13.13 of the second period, it's Miller off to the box. Two minutes for high sticking on the captain, Romaniosi. This was a retaliation penalty in the offensive zone. Demko would come up with a save on Roman Yossi, but sloppy puck movement would doom this Nashville Purse power play. The puck bouncing all over the place all night long. Listen, both teams had to play on that surface for the entirety of the game, so uh, the sloppy puck movement is on the Nashville Purse. They had a tough time getting the play that they were looking for, and the power play expires with just one shot on goal. At 15.51 of the second period, it's Carey off the box. Two minutes for interference. This was also in the offensive zone. Look to go in hard on the four check and just got there a half a stride too late. Lankinen comes up with a save on Kuzmenko plus Pedersen's follow up on the delay call. Pedersen though cashes in on that power play with his second goal of the period, his fourth goal of the season, a wrist shot from the side of the circle. He just picked his spot far side and Lankinen with the traffic in front never saw that puck, never had any opportunity uh, to come up with that save. So Pedersen's second goal of the period puts Vancouver now ahead. 3-2 to two at 1835 of the second period. It's Lankanen with the save on Mikhaev, and that takes us to the end of the second period. The Nashville Predators are out shooting the Vancouver Canucks 18-16, but with only six shots on goal. In the second, the Vancouver Canucks are able to pick up two goals, and we go to the final 20 minutes of regulation with the Vancouver Canucks leading by one. On that clean sheet in the third period, we're 137 in, and it's Lankanen coming up with the save on Susie 304 of of the third period. Lankinen comes up with a save on Hughes at 3.06 of the third period. Hoglander's off to the box. Two minutes for interference. This is a perfect opportunity for the National Purse power play to get them back into the game, but just Eight seconds into the power play, it's Philip Forsberg off to the box. Two minutes for slashing. Now, 
I have gone back and looked at this play a number of times, and I honestly cannot tell you where exactly the penalty comes. I thought it was a soft call. I thought it was a weak call. It took a power play away from the Nashville Purs, creating a, another four-on-four -four scenario, this time for a minute and 52 seconds. Just like the previous four-on-four -four scenario, it is the Vancouver Canucks cashing in yet again. Miller's fifth goal of the season comes in at a tap-in of the loose puck after Lankinen cannot squeeze it in between the arm and the body. It trickled loose, and there was Miller right there on the edge of the blue paint to put that puck into the net, giving Vancouver a 4-2 lead, their second 4-on-4 four -four goal of the game. At 6.25 of the third period, we see Thatcher Demko coming up with a save on Tommy Novak. At 11.07 of the third period, we see Thatcher Demko coming up with a save on O'Reilly. 12.25, another save on Sherwood. Nashville Predators generating some momentum here, looking to make a comeback in the third period. 13.18 of the third is Lankinen having to come up with a save on Josh. Within 13.30 is 12 seconds later, another save on Garland. Demko back to work at 14.03 with a save on the captain, Roman Yossi. Lankinen would make a save at 15.38 on on Hughes, we would see the empty net scenario after that. Nashville Predators unable to get organized. Pedersen ends up taking the puck all the way in, tucking it into the empty net for his fifth goal of the season, and he gets the empty net goal, leading to a hat trick. Three goals in this game. That gives the Vancouver Canucks a 5-2 to two lead over the Nashville Predators. Uh, the Preds would continue to skate it on out for the final two-plus minutes of this game, but would not generate very much of an offensive threat nor a comeback. Your final final score in this game would be the Vancouver Canucks 5, the Nashville Predators 2, and for the second time in a week, the Nashville Predators have underperformed uh, against these Vancouver Canucks. Shots on goal. Vancouver 27, Nashville 25 for the game, and again, another place, another metric where the Nashville Predators underperformed. They average well over 25 shots per game, but against the Vancouver Canucks, 18 shots in the first matchup, 25 in this one. Vancouver Canucks now 2-0 and over the Preds in their three regular season meetings. One more to come later in the year. So for the Nashville Predators, not much of a revenge game from last week going into Vancouver. It's now time for the Rebirth Sports Full Game Recap. We go all the way back to December 19th of the year, 2023, when the Nashville Predators were facing off on home ice, closing out the regular season series uh, against the Vancouver Canucks. Head coach Andrew Burnett deployed his line combinations and defensive pairings in the following way. Forsberg, O'Reilly, and Nyquist, Novak, Glass, and Evangelista. A little bit of a different look right there. Trenton, Sissons, and Parson, Smith, McCarron, and Tomasino. Sherwood, healthy scratch. McDonough and Yossi, Luzon, and Carey, Barry, and Shen, so Fabro also healthy scratch. UC Saros gets a start on home ice at Bridgestone Arena. We are just a minute and 35 seconds into the game, and CC Stars come out with the first save of the game. It's on Roenick at 4.08 of the first period. It's to Smith coming up with a save on Philip Forsberg. That's the first shot on goal for the Nashville Furs at 4.09 of the first period. It's Hoaglander off the box, two minutes for slashing. To Smith comes up with a save on Yossi, and then Barry picks up a penalty, two minutes for interference. Perhaps a little bit of embellishment in the situation, but it leads to a four-on-four -four situation. That's when UC Saros on the power. Power play after the four-on-four four has to come up with a save on Miller and then also comes up with another save on Pedersen. At 10.08 of the first period, it's UC Saros coming up with a save on Bosser. At 11.48 of the first period, it's UC Saros coming up with a save on Roenick. At the 12.59 mark of the first period, UC Saros back to work again. This time coming up with a save on Bluger. And then at 16.38, Vancouver breaks through and Pedersen scores his 13th of the season, giving Canucks a 1-0 lead. It was a wrist shot snipe after he just left Barry in the dust in the neutral zone, got in, got plenty of time, and just an absolute sick release and just a snipe in this situation. 13th of the season for Pedersen, fourth against National Predators this season. one nothing in favor of Vancouver, but just seconds later at 17-9 of the first period, it's Amano, first goal of the season. Barry overskates the puck, which hit the side of the net. It bounces to the front of the net right into the low slot area and is set up perfectly. First goal of the season gives Vancouver a two-goal lead at Bridgestone Arena in just a matter of seconds. And Barry heavily involved, heavily involved in both of those. At 17-17 of the first, we see Stars coming back to work, coming with a save on Roenick. At 19-45 of the first period, we find DeSmith coming with a save on Tomasino's breakaway. But behind the play, things are getting a little bit wild. It officially blow the plate at 19-47. That's where we'll assess the penalties. McCarron coming in late. 
to respond. Luzon was involved with a clean hit earlier. Multiple Canucks players involved, but McCarron was the only one who dropped the glove, so he gets a two starting right there. He uh, says some choice words to the referee, and then they were very choice. Ten minutes right there, and then followed with a game misconduct. I thought this was excessive, absolutely excessive at this point in the game. 1947 of the first period, McCarron is done. 2-10 plus a game. So Vancouver back to the power play, but only 13 seconds ago in the period. So we'll hit the end of the first period with Vancouver out shooting Nashville 11-7, but leading the game 2-0 in a power play of 147 to start the second period. Saros comes with a save on Pedersen. The PK would be able to hold after that. 2-30 into the second period. It's DeSmith coming up with a save on Tommy, Tommy Novak at 3-02 at the second period. DeSmith coming with a save on Barry at 4-28. DeSmith, another save on Tommy Thomas, you know, the Nashville Predators finally getting their skates under them in this game at 5.36 of the second period. Saros coming with a save on Ronick at 8.46 of the second. Saros comes with a save on Bossers deflection. Now the Vancouver Canucks getting some opportunities. 9.38 of the second period. It's Pedersen hitting the post at 10.47. Preds back on offense. Coming to Smith comes up with a big save on Cole Smith at 13.02 of the second period. It's to Smith coming up with a save on the captain, Roman Yossi. The Nashville Predators are going at it with the Vancouver Canucks. And at 1423, that's where we find Luzon getting his third goal of the season. He jumped into the rush after a big hit in the defensive zone by his defensive partner. That would be Alex Carrier. The rush is sprung, and Luzon jumps into it, receives the feed from Evangelista and snipes. That wrist shot is truly a great one. Luzon's third goal of the season gets the National Predators on the board. Vancouver, though, still holds a two to one lead, but Vancouver is going to respond immediately. 1438, so at 1423, Luzon. Scores at 1438. Hoaglander scores his 10th goal of the season. It was a redirect of Hughes's long shot. That gives Vancouver back there. Two goal lead immediately. Three to one now in favor of the Canucks. But 15 24, it's Puce Suter's fifth goal of the season with some rebound jam that trickles over the line, giving Vancouver a four to one lead now in this game. Right here in the second period, the Nashville Purs definitely not having a good go here on the home rank. 17 11 of the second period, Puce starts coming out with a save on Hughes off of the rush. He turned on the Jets, and it was like he had a level beyond what anybody else on the rink could achieve. 1842 of the second period, Tuesday stars coming with a save on Bosser. Again, we flip over to the back of the sheet to find it. 1909 of the second period, it's the National Predators picking up a bench minor. Too many men on the ice. No shots on goal for the Vancouver Canucks over the course of the rest of the period on the power play. So at the end of the second period, Vancouver's out shooting Nashville. 21 to 18. It would be a carryover. So the Vancouver Canucks start the third period just like they started the second period. A carryover on the power play this time of 109 and a save on Ronick for UC Soros would come at this moment. But right after the power play would expire for the Vancouver Canucks, 116 of the third period would be Bluger with his fourth goal of the season. It was another perfect Hughes setup, just a, an otherworldly you know, defenseman and offensive defenseman out there. You, you can put his name up there with any of the greats of, I think, all time. The way he is uh, panning out, it's only going to take a matter of having the number of games played by the end of this thing. To see him up there with some of the greats. But Bluger's fourth goal of the season gives Vancouver a 5-1 to one lead. That's going to be it for UC Soros. He checks out of this one. Kevin Lankinen comes in, and Lankinen is going immediately to work. We are 2-34 into the third period. Lankinen comes up with a save on Pedersen at 4-54. Lankinen comes up with a save on Garland at the 546 mark. There's Kevin Lankinen again coming with another save on Pedersen at the 658 mark of the third period. It's Vancouver off to the box, picking up a bench minor. Too many men, no, not all. <laughs> Not all of Vancouver is off to the box, uh, though that would be a unique moment. See, the bench miner assessed to the Vancouver Canucks for too many men on the ice. Look, i got to find some sort of laugh in this thing. Uh, it would be DeSmith coming up with a save on O'Reilly. A quick whistle would frustrate the National Predators during this power play. Other than this save on O'Reilly's jam attempt, the Preds not able to get a whole lot done in this situation. We hit the 9.35 mark of the third period. Lankinen comes up with a save on Bluger and then a 10.45. The Preds still out there generating scoring opportunities, still giving it a go to Smith. Comes up with a save on McDonough, plus the follow-up by Luke Shen, two defensemen joining together for a scoring opportunity. The 12.28 mark to Smith comes up with a save on Forsberg. Then I want you to listen to a couple of names here for the Predators down the stretch. 13.21, it's to Smith coming up with a save on Tommy Novak at 16.29 of the third period. Lankinen coming up with a save on Bosser as Van 
Cooper brought the puck in the zone for one of the few times in the final 10 minutes of the period. 17-17 of the thirds to Smith coming with a save on Luke Evangelista. At 18-55, it's to Smith coming with a save on Yuso Parson. And at 19-48 of the third period, it's Glass getting his first goal of the season. It was Cole Smith with the setup off the half wall and the finish by Glass from the slot. First of all, great to see Glass up and healthy and in the game, but also great to see him still jamming away and grinding up until the very final seconds of this game with 12 seconds to go in a blowout game. There's Glass getting his first goal of the season. There wasn't a lot to celebrate, so there wasn't a celebration. Very, very muted, uh, but congratulations to Glass picking up his first goal of the season. Breaking through like that is a is a big moment, even if it occurs during the course of a blowout. So the Preds, down the stretch, Andrew Burnett gives their young players some good ice time. They get some good shifts. They generate some offense, and uh, Vancouver Canucks close this thing out. It's a 5-2 to two final in favor of the Vancouver Canucks. They outshoot the Nashville Purs 35 to 28 and for the season series and it's something we'll go into a little bit more with the numbers uh, more they sweep the season series the Vancouver Canucks sweep the National Pairs 3-0 in the season series and then tonight's final 5-2 that means they outscore the Nashville Predators 13 to 6 on the season is that right yeah 13 to 6 on the season Predators average only two games per game against the Vancouver Canucks this season two early in the season one later on when the Preds got things rolling but this was not a game where the Preds got things rolling UC Saros the last 10 games incredible this game uh, there wasn't much he could do there wasn't much the National Predators could do the Preds were beaten by a team that was better than them on the rink tonight they were beaten all three times this season by a team that's better than them the Vancouver Canucks play the style that the National Predators are looking to play moving forward it's been a learning curve all season long going up against the Vancouver Canucks they fell 3-2 at Bridgestone Arena back on October the 24th, and then they fell 5-2 on the 31st of October, and now they fall again 5-2 in this game. That's a tough one for the Nashville Predators. They've really been hot as of late, but the Vancouver Canucks have been hot all season long for the Canucks, their 22nd win. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Tracy, owner-operator of Strong Style Fitness, and that's me and my training assistant, Rizzo. And we are here to bring you fitness that meets you where you are by offering circuit classes, bar inspired classes, Tabata workouts, boot camps, guided stretching, and more, all taught by a certified personal trainer, me. To learn more, go to our website, strongstylefit.com. Subscribe on YouTube at Strong Style Fitness. Follow on social media at Strong Style Fit. But most importantly, let's get you moving. It doesn't matter if it's your first workout or you've been doing it for years. Strong Style Fitness has the workout that meets you on your journey and helps you along the path to a happier, healthier life. I understand where you've been what you were going through, and where you were going. And I want to take you there. We'll see you on the mat. Mwah. That was the Rebirth Sports full game recap. We sure do appreciate Rebirth Sports for sticking with us for another season. They're going to be joining us for the postseason, of course, and all of the coverage here from the bunker. So thank you so much. Stick taps, love, and respect to everyone over there at Rebirth Sports. That recapped you on all three games for the regular season. You're all previewed up for game one. And let's talk about the rest of the playoff bracket very quickly. On the western side of things, it's Dallas versus Vegas. That's a fascinating series right there. And a very good team is going to be out in the first round as, uh, well, frankly, all of these series. Winnipeg is going to be hosting Colorado in the first round. That is going to be fascinating as well. The 2-3 matchup in the Central Division is something that we've tracked all season long, knowing the three-team weave was going to lead to two of those three teams facing off in this first round. So, again, another tremendous hockey club, Winnipeg or Colorado, going to be done in the first round. We're talking a lot about Vancouver, Nashville, so you already know about that one. Edmonton, L.A., is the other side of this. This bracket for the winner of Vancouver, Nashville, they'll face the winner of Edmonton versus L.A. And that is going to be a great series. Edmonton, L.A. have some playoff history in recent years, and it has been tremendous to watch. I'm very much looking forward to that series. Over the eastern side of things, Florida versus Tampa Bay, the Battle of Florida in round one. We'll also find Boston versus Toronto, two of those old teams playing against each other right there. The Rangers and the Capitals seems like they find a way to play each other every other year, and they'll do it again this year. And then Carolina versus the New York Islanders over in that series. That's your 16-team playoff bracket is going to be fascinating. Watch. Get ready. Buckle in. 16, it's going to be 
two months of nonstop hockey, four rounds, best of seven. We'll whittle it all the way down until somebody hoists the cup. And now that's going to do it for this episode. I've talked an awful lot about this series already, and I think that the National Players can be highly competitive in this series. And something I talked about, uh, mentioned a couple of times, teased a couple of times, and I mentioned extensively on an earlier broadcast this season was the learning curve. The style and the speed and the offensive production which, which the Vancouver Canucks play is exactly what Andrew Brunette has come in this season and looked to implement on this Nashville Predators team. I talked extensively about the learning curve on a previous episode, and here is that conversation. 0-3 versus Vancouver, outscored 13-6 this season. The Predators were only able to generate two goals in each of the games against Canucks. The Canucks are good. Coming into the season, nobody thought the Predators or the Canucks were going to be good. So let's start with that baseline. That's a nice, easy baseline to set. Three games now. The National Predators faced off against the Canucks early in the season in October. Canucks got out the gate fast. This happens from time to time. And then teams come back to earth, and their seasons don't exactly work out the way they might have projected in October. So the Vancouver Canucks beating the Preds twice in October in a span of seven days. Uh, it sure seemed like the Canucks were a good team, but now we have been some time without seeing the Vancouver Canucks, and the National Predators have gotten their skates under them, gotten their game under them, and are certainly trending in the right direction. You see Saros is one of the hottest goaltenders in the NHL coming into this game. The Preds are one of the hottest teams in the NHL coming into this game, and for a Western Conference matchup, Pacific versus Central, maybe the two teams that uh, have the most momentum as of late going up against each other. Now, this was a measuring stick game on the learning curve. You remember we talked about the the learning curve. That's right. I just gave you a curve right there. We talked about the learning curve the last time the National Predators faced off against the Vancouver team. Vancouver is what the National Predators want to be in the future, but it's going to take some time because you see how quick the Vancouver Canucks change direction, transition, move to offense, how they just instinctually go about the game. So for the National Predators, they're observing, they're learning, and unfortunately taking a bit of a beating right now. So going all the way here to the Christmas season, the National Predators hadn't seen Vancouver since Halloween. Uh, it's proven now. Vancouver Canucks are for real. They're absolutely for real. And they're going to be a very difficult team in the Pacific Division for somebody come playoff time. As I have seen enough of the Vancouver Canucks now to absolutely know uh, through the first half of the season, they're probably the surprise of the NHL. It's easy to say the New York Rangers were going to be good or that the Boston Bruins, or of course the Boston Bruins were going to be good. You, you think you get the point. But nobody was saying the Vancouver Canucks were going to be good. And the Vancouver Canucks are, in fact, very good. I've watched enough of their hockey now with my own eyes. I've covered enough of their games myself. 0-3 against the Vancouver Canucks this season. The Preds unable to get a single point. And unless uh, something uh, kind of strange happens, I don't think the Preds will find themselves in the best of seven against the Vancouver Canucks. But to be honest with you, I, I don't know too many teams are going to want to find themselves uh, in a best of seven. The way Demko plays in net, the way he's uh, near the tops in the league, not even in in this game against the Nashville Predators, DeSmith did a very, very excellent job. Uh, probably won't get near enough credit since the game ends up being a blowout, but DeSmith made some really good saves first and second period to keep his team uh, in the lead and uh, to expand on the lead then and shut it down there at the end. Uh, but the, the balanced attack, the balanced offense, and if you're not paying attention to Quinn Hughes because he plays uh, in the Pacific Northwest and the game times start late at night, you're missing out. I understand Cal McCarr has gotten all of the headlines the last couple of seasons for what is happening out there on the blue line, but Quinn Hughes is easily one of the most dynamic blue liners in the game right now, and he is just getting started. Highly impressive stuff. The speed, the passing ability, the vision. Quinn Hughes is going to continue to electrify in Vancouver and set this league on fire for a long time to come. All right, that's a, that's a lot of praise for the Vancouver Canucks. They, they have had a good first half of the season. They sure did beat the Nashville Predators into the ground in three games. So you got to give them the credit. You got to give them the stick taps. You got to give them the respect that they earn, that they deserve. Now, see you next season, Vancouver, unless something works out where we get together for a best of seven in, uh, in April. And that would be some wild, wild stuff. I wouldn't mind that. I, I actually wouldn't. I think it'd be a fun series to cover. The digital environment can be quite intimidating, time consuming, and cumbersome, especially with all those other areas that need attention at your business. And that's why Stripe Digital Solutions is here to help. I know because that's exactly what Stripe Digital Solutions did for me and the renegades of Puck. 
From designing my home website and helping me create my merchandise to special event posters, brand building, and social media management, but it's not just that, it's so much more. Stripe Digital Solutions has helped me every step of the way, from startup to full-time operation, Stripe Digital Solutions has been there to assist and advise every single step of the journey. In today's fast-paced world, the path to success is having a strong digital partner and nobody is better in the trenches than Brandy and Stripe Digital Solutions. Get the solution before it's even a problem with Stripe Digital Solutions. So have the Preds made up the learning curve? Well, a best of seven reveals all. For the Nashville Predators, they do have an opportunity. If UC Soros plays to his potential, then he can do more than keep the Predators in a game. The Preds' defense can play capable and physical hockey and at times has been able to shut down some of the better teams in the NHL, including the Florida Panthers, the Winnipeg Jets, and there are other examples. The Predators' offense, as long as it can be distributed through all four lines, can be highly effective. But if it is just fours, O'Reilly and Nyquist, the Nashville Predators will fall and they will not be able to score very many goals against a good defensive club in the Vancouver Canucks. If they can get secondary scoring, if Beauvillier and Zucker can step up and be the playoff performers that they were brought in here at the trade deadline to be, and the young players getting their first experience at NHL playoff action like Luke Evangelista and Tommy Novak, if they can step up, they're surrounded by some good Good quality, hard-playing hockey players like Sherwood. He has been exceptional this year. I'm looking forward to seeing him ramp it up for the playoffs. McCarron, of course, Cole Smith out there. And Mark Jankowski could be a really important player in this series. The Predators are not full of household names, and some in other markets may look at that lineup and scoff. But if you've spent any time watching the Predators since they turned their season around, you'd realize that it is more about the sum of the parts than it is about the individuals. The Predators have a couple of really nice individual pieces when it comes to Philip Forsberg, Roman Yossi, and UC Saros. But they also have a whole lot of good, hard-working, grinded-out, hard-hitting hockey players. And Jeremy Luzon happens to be the all-time single-season hits leader. Cannot wait to see how he steps it up for the playoffs. This series is full of intrigue and it is going to be highly interesting to see how a rookie coach in Andrew Brunette goes and approaches his first ever playoff opportunity. Again, the Predators had zero expectations in the year of what was supposed to be a full rebuild, rookie head coach, rookie general manager, lots of misfit pieces coming in and participating in this experiment known as the rebuild, and the Predators now find themselves headed off to Vancouver for games one and two. No expectations versus extremely high expectations. Take advantage of your opportunity. Play loose. Play free. Come back to Bridgestone Arena with a lead in the series, maybe. I hear the roar of the home crowd and enjoy everything that Smashville brings. Very much looking forward to the NHL playoffs as I do every year. So for the next 24 hours until the playoffs begin, you will not find me. I will be sleeping. I will be resting. I will be recovering from the regular season and I will be getting ready to go full speed ahead because once the puck drops on the playoffs, we don't sleep until the Stanley Cup is raised. That's going to do it for episode number 905. Round one, game one, preview is in the books. We sure do appreciate each and every one of you, and it always brings us new members to the audience during this time of year. So if it's your first time joining the show, please follow along, subscribe to the channel, and check us out on a number of opportunities. We'll be in the bunker for each and every game. I will be here immediately after game one, and we will recap that game as soon as the game is in the books. That's going to do it for this this episode, though, I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonye. You like the look of the new set? It's a little bit different, isn't it? Change some things up a little. Stick taps, love, and respect.